say you think you'll make it home for dinner? I'm not sure. I've got some meetings. They could run kind of late. Me too, so just let me know. Yeah, sure. Oh. We're showing it to Emma. Of course. Anyway. Do you think Scott told Madison that he and I... We're working together to keep her away from me. He wasn't planning on it. He doesn't want to hurt her. Right, so then maybe he should just keep lying to her. I mean, it seems to be working for everybody else, right? Would you mind signing for these, please? David. Part-time job, remember? Working for the free clinic. Right. How are you? Okay. Well, that's not true. Maybe a little better than last time I saw you, but a long way from okay. You want to talk about it? <laughs> wow. I look like that much of a basket case? You did something that didn't live up to Ryan's ridiculous standards, and whatever it was, it's obviously still causing you great distress. I'd like to help. Just go away. I've always been a great sounding board. You're, for you, uh, you are also a conniving sociopath, and I know all you want is for me to help you get your old job back here at the hospital. That's not all I want. I don't want to hear it. And I'm not desperate enough to sit here and listen to your advice, so just leave my hospital, okay? Greenlee. I said go! Will you back off, Hayward? I think the last thing Greenlee needs right now is you making things worse. Making what worse, Scotty? And what do you know about any of this? Here's what I know. You're harassing her, and it's got to stop now. I never realized the two of you were so close. Really? I never realized you weren't smart enough to leave when Greenlee asks you to. We were just having a simple conversation. Do you want me to have you thrown out of here? Because I think I'd really enjoy that. Does that go for you, too? You can't hear the word no, David. I do now. Take care. Thank you. Forget it. No. Really, Scott, you may be the only person in the world who understands what I'm going through right now. Brian can barely look at me. I mean, he barely says anything at all. There's just this silence. Hmm. I just want to grab him by the shirt and shake him and say, get over it. Yeah. Yes, I screwed up. So what? I'm here now. You want to just throw it all away? Yeah, well, I wouldn't advise that. Well, there's only so many times I can apologize. I take it you haven't told Madison yet. What am I going to do? Oh, uh, I, hey, honey, just thought you should know. The reason I got so chummy with you in the beginning was because Greenlee sprung me early from prison so I could be your friend, keep you away from Ryan. Oh, by the way, how is the baby doing? No, I, I can't do that. And you can live with this? I'm going to have to. Forever? I'm going to have to. She's been hurt enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard plenty about Madison being hurt. You know, you were the one who tried to get her to leave town. You know, you lied to your husband about his baby, and yet you're going to keep pointing the finger at Madison. Madison made her own choices. Not all of them. Lying to her right now, but not enough to come clean. Last time I owned up to something, got me sent to prison. All right, now this time, Madison gets caught in the crossfire. Well, she's no fragile flower. She'd survive. Look, I want better for her than that. For her or for you? Look, I am not going to hurt her because of my stupid mistake. And neither should you. Protecting Madison is not my priority in all this. Well, you know what? Maybe it should be. You think about it. If Madison and I split up, what happens? She goes right back to who she was before, a pregnant woman carrying Ryan's baby, with no one to take care of her but Ryan. Hi, how are you? I'm all right. Good. Me too. She heard us fighting, and she just wanted to make sure everything was okay. What did you tell her? Well, I didn't lie to her, if that's what you're asking. Is this how it's going to be from now on? This is, this is how it is, Greenlee. I can't change what happened any more than you can. Okay, fine. But did you see Emma right now? 
I mean, she hasn't said three kind words to me since Annie went away, and yet she managed to be nicer to me than you did. What do you, what do you expect me to do? I can't, I just sort of, like, forget it and, and move on? No, I know I hurt you. Badly. And I know I have a lot to make up for, and it's not going to happen overnight. I get that, but this cannot break us, Ryan. As bad as it is, eventually we're going to have to start repairing what I broke. Let's do it for us. And everything we've been through to stay together. Let's do it for Emma. Because we're the only stability that little girl has in her life right now. She needs her family, and we're it. Will you at least try? Ryan, will you? I can't believe how much Emma's reading. I know. I know she loves it. Ever since she was little, Annie was writing her those stories, and now she's reading them herself. I'd love to read them. Maybe she'll become a famous author one day and support us in our old age. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you talked to Kendall? Yeah, I checked in with her this morning, actually. I've been calling her, and it just goes to voicemail. I hope she's okay. My guy's still watching her. She's safe. So, <clears throat> how did Emma react when you talked to her about us? She was, she was concerned. Well, that's something, at least. I'm not sure I would say that's a positive. Well, it's not a negative. I mean, it's a step up for painting me. You know what I think we should do? What? I think that we should take that trip that we were talking about to the lake. Just the three of us. What? Did I say something wrong? I know we, I know we have to do this. I, I know we can't throw away everything that, that we have, but a, a happy family trip. I'm just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do that now. Ryan, I, I'm just gonna go check in with Kendall, and just if Emma asks, I'll be back in time for homework, okay? Now what's your problem? You. 